Chapter Chapter 2, Self-Assess Your Back The following questions are designed to see if you could benefit from treatment to address your back and neck pain. 1. Do you have neck and back pain that limits you performing your activities like dressing, toileting, bathing, grooming? 2. Do you have neck or back pain that restricts you from performing any recreational activities like hiking or sports? 3. Do you have neck or back pain that restricts you from performing any daily household activities like laundry, vacuuming or cleaning? 4. Do you have pain at night that significantly interferes with your sleeping? 5. Do you have any of the following symptoms in your arms or legs like pain, burning, shooting pain, ache slash numbness, tingling? 6. Have you noticed weakness in your arms or legs? 7. Have you noticed significant loss of balance or difficulty walking? 8. Do you have a weakness in the foot or foot drop? 9. Have you experienced loss of bowel or bladder control? If you answered yes to any of the questions up to 5, it can be treated traditionally. But, if you are experiencing the symptoms in questions 6 through 9, you may need an immediate referral to a specialist. If your pain seems to have occurred out of nowhere or you have minor pain you attribute to a simple strain. There are some preliminary assessments that may be helpful in helping you to decide what the problem is and what type of treatment would be the most helpful. Myotome testing technique. Begin by asking the client to perform a movement as per instructions and hold an isometric contraction against therapist resistance for a count of five. C5 shoulder abduction asks the patient to raise both their arms to the side of them simultaneously as strongly as then can while the examiner provides resistance to this movement. Compare the strength of each arm. Arm. C6 elbow flexion test the strength of lower arm. Flexion by holding the patient's wrist from above and instructing them to flex their hand up to their shoulder. Provide resistance at the wrist. Repeat and compare to the opposite arm. This tests the biceps muscle. Test the strength of wrist extension by asking the patient to extend their wrist while the examiner resists the movement. This tests the forearm extensors. Repeat with the other arm. C7 elbow extension asks the patient to extend their forearm against the examiner's resistance. Begin their extension from a fully flexed position because this part of the movement is most sensitive to a loss in strength. This tests the triceps. Note any asymmetry in the other. 5. C8 finger flexion examine the patient's hands. Look for intrinsic hand, thener and hypothenar muscle wasting. Test the patient's grip by having the patient hold the examiner's fingers in their fist tightly and instructing them not to let go while the examiner attempts to remove them. Normally the examiner cannot remove their fingers. This tests the forearm, flexors and the intrinsic hand muscles. Compare the hands for strength asymmetry. Finger flexion is innervated by the C8 nerve root via the median nerve. T1 finger abduction and adduction test the intrinsic hand muscles once. Again by having the patient abduct or fan out all their fingers. Instruct. The patient did not allow the examiner to compress them back in. Normally, one can resist the examiner from replacing the fingers. Finger. Abduction or fanning is innervated by the T1 nerve root via the ulnar. Nerve. Thumb opposition to complete the motor examination of the upper extremities. Test the strength of the thumb opposition by telling the patient to touch the tip of their thumb to the tip of their pinky finger. Apply resistance to the thumb with your index finger. Repeat with the other thumb and compare. Thumb opposition is innervated by the C8 and T1 nerve roots via the median nerve. L3 test extension at the knee by placing one hand under the knee and the other on top of the lower leg to provide resistance. Ask the patient to kick out or extend the lower leg at the knee. Repeat and compare to the other leg. This tests the quadriceps muscle. L1 and L2 hip flexion proceeding to the lower extremities. First test the flexion of the hip by asking the patient to lie down and raise each leg separately while the examiner resists. Repeat and compare with the other leg. This tests the iliosos muscles. L4, ankle dorsiflexion test dorsiflexion of the ankle by holding the top of the ankle and have the patient pull their foot up towards their face as hard as possible. Repeat with the other foot. This tests the muscles in the anterior compartment of the lower leg. 6, L5, Great toe extension asks the patient to move the large toe against the examiner's resistance up towards the patient's face. This tests the extensor hallucis longus muscle. S2, test flexion at the knee by holding the knee from the side and applying resistance under the ankle and instructing the patient to pull the lower leg towards their buttock as hard as possible. Repeat with the other leg. This tests the hamstrings. Self-test for neck pain. S1, ankle plantar flexion and aversion slash knee flexion holding the bottom of the foot. Ask the patient to press down as hard as possible, or in standing rise up onto the ball of their foot. 
Repeat with the other foot and compare. This tests the gastrocnemius and soleus muscles in the posterior compartment of the lower leg. Look in your mirror and tip your ear to your shoulder. No, not bringing your shoulder to your ear. Your ear slash head are the only body parts that need to be moving. Each side should be equal. If you cannot bend your neck any of the sides shows tightness and limited neck mobility. Pretend that you are checking your blind spots. You need to look over your shoulders using your neck only. If you find that you are using your eyes only to check or moving your upper body, you are most likely struggling with rotation in your neck. A lot of us suffer from something called anterior head carriage, meaning our head is carried out in front of our shoulders. Have someone compare the center of your shoulder with your ear canal. Ideally, the two should line up. 7. Upper Extremity Nerve Glide Test Standing up straight, place the arm to be stretched out to your side with the palm facing up. Slowly bend your wrist down towards the ground keeping the palm up. Then tilt your head away from the arm being stretched and notice any change in sensation. Then tilt your head towards the side being stretched and observe any change. Negative test. No significant change in pulling or symptoms down the arm when moving the neck. Positive test. If your pain symptoms get worse when tilting the head away from the arm and better when tilting the head to the side of the outstretched arm. It shows the nerve root is under excessive tension at the neck. Chin tuck, lift, and hold. Begin the test by lying flat with nothing under your head. You may bend your knees to allow the natural curve in your lower back. Begin by tucking your chin and then raising the head off the floor about one inch maintaining the tuck position. Hold the position, if possible, without letting the chin protrude or the head to drop. Back the floor. May attempt up to three times, taking three minute rests between attempts. Negative test, able to maintain proper testing position for the duration of the exercise. Men, 38 seconds and women, 30 seconds. Positive test, unable to maintain testing position for required duration or without pain. It indicates weakness of the deep neck stabilizers muscles placing increased stress on ligaments and disc in the neck. Self-distraction. This can be performed in standing or sitting. With your hands feel for the two bony bumps at the back of the skull. Place the base of your thumbs on these points and interlace. The fingers. Gently squeeze your hands around the base of the skull and move. The hands up. You may also slightly tilt the chin to your chest while you do this. Maintain for up to 30 seconds and take notice of any changes in pain or symptoms. Negative test. This test is negative when lifting your head does not decrease any pain slash symptoms in the neck or into the arms. Positive test. This test is positive when lifting your head up relieves the pain or arm symptoms by at least 50%. This indicates something is compressing the nerve root as they run down your neck. 8. The forward bend test. Stand up straight with your hands at your side. Bend forwards and reach to your toes as far as you can go. Negative test. Your low back pain does not get worse when you bend over the waist. Positive test. If your pain gets worse bending over the test is positive. If the pain goes down the back of the leg, your pain might be caused by a disc irritation, a nerve root irritation or facet joint irritation. Quadrant test. Stand up straight with your hands on your waist. Bend your spine backwards, extension, then side. Bend and rotate to the side of your spine that you have pain. Repeat this on the opposite side as well. Negative test. This test is negative if the position does not reproduce your pain. Positive test. If you get into the testing position and the test reproduces your low back pain, it indicates that there is facet joint irritation. If it radiates down the leg, it means that there is likely pressure being put on the nerve roots that are coming out of your spinal cord. Slump test. Sit at the edge of a table or chair. Slouch over and tuck your chin down to your chest. Bring one of your ankles into dorsiflexion. Straighten your knee until you feel a pull anywhere from your low back to bottom of your foot. Most people will feel a pull behind the knee. Once you feel a pull, look up towards the ceiling. Negative test. This test is negative when lifting your head does not decrease the stretch slash pull slash pain in the back of the leg when you lift your head up. Positive test. This test is positive when lifting your head up relieves the pain by at least 50%. It indicates the nerve are being pressed and are not moving smoothly in the path. Heel walk. Try walking on your heels keeping the toes off the floor. If you are unable to keep one of your feet from dropping flat to the floor, you might have damage caused by nerve at L4 and L5 disc level. To walk, try walking on your toes, keeping the heels of both feet off the floor. If the heel of one foot falls to the floor and you are unable to walk on your toes, you may have nerve damage due to L5 disc herniation. 9. Squat test. Hold onto a bed post or railing and squat halfway down, first with one leg and then the other. If one of your thighs are weak, 
you may have nerve damage from a disc herniation in upper back. Lumbar canal stress test. Stand in an upright position and raise your hands above. Extend your back in this position and come back to starting position. Repeat the same movement for 30 seconds. If you experience pain in your lower back then there is narrowing of your spinal canal which is putting pressure on your nerves, causing spinal canal stenosis. Spinal curvature examination. Stand straight in front of the mirror. Observe your shoulder level. If they are not aligned, then there could be possibility of scoliosis in your upper back. Also, look to your lateral curvature undressed, if there is any extra fold on either of the side. If present can be bending of spine to that side. Note, people generally treat their back with rest and over-the-counter medicines. But back pain usually should include some resting positions, home remedies, exercises, proper food and nutrition. We will provide you with a complete 24 hours guide stepwise approach to treat your pain and differentiate with other conditions in the following chapters. 10.